Right, I'm just going to try and do something again with the body track system here and quad uh, with Mark about how the, the shape of shot that you're watching me struggle with at the moment with my irons. Um, it should be fun, it should be interesting. So you've seen me at Wolf Creek struggle to try and change kind of mid tour for want of a better word. Um, my shape of shot with my irons is definitely struggling with approach play, usually a strength of mine where I'm not gaining any strokes at the moment in any of the strokes gains that we're capturing. Um, so I'm going to hit, I'm, I'm trying not to tell Mark what I'm doing because I want him just to see the traces of like kind of all neutral so you, I think you know at home if you've been watching what I mean but from one shape to another basically. Let's show you. Right, so I'm going to hit just one shot here and we'll call it just shot one so you tell me when you want me to go. Alright, stand still. Go. So that's shot one. Not the best example of it, but it is still my effort at it. Zero and ideally that would be two out to win. So ideally that would be two out to win. Distance wise. So that's a 155 carry for me with my 7. I'm going to hit shot 2 now, Mark. You tell me when you're happy. Shot 2. Yeah. So look at it. That's, so that's a 167 carry. That's a difference. That's a massive difference. Right, so we've got the two traces, and you're saying, so the second one that you've seen, there's a lot more depth of rotation, you just said. Yeah, you you've got the clubs now crossing the line, you can see that yeah. you've turned, you're trying yeah. to, and now you've just, you've created more turns, so that's going to get you more behind it, and you yeah. can see you're going to create more speed. Which I do, one, six, seven on a seven iron for me is big, because I'm pat, pat, like think pat, pat, right? <laughs> I am like king of pat, pat. I grew up playing golf pat, pat, and then just put you to death. So like I had no friends because like just pat, pat, that like, will be this guy. Oh, he's holding 20 footers, isn't he? Like, that's my game, okay? Mm. And then we film and we measure more. We playing like ridiculously long courses back in the UK. Even playing that good amateur golf, you, you're playing some short little. Yeah, yeah, little because tracks. it's more park lines. Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, So I can compete. Now I'm getting to film with tour players and we play a bit with tour players and I think you're like I'm in it straight as them, but they're all 30 on me. So unless I hold 20 footers. It's a three and two loss every time. Yep. Basically. I can get to all square after nine and pretend I'm winning, but I'm li I'm literally like a duck going like this underneath, and they're like just going. Yeah. Like, in a minute, I'm just going to go like that to you on a par five because I'll let the seven iron into it, and you've got a free wood. So I try and get my seven iron going one six seven, which works, and that for me, I feel like I have to just get my shoulders rotating. Yep. Loads. So when I've measured on body systems, my shoulders can turn seventy degrees when I'm trying to hit target. Okay, yep. And my 7 iron can go 145 to 155. Yep, yep, yep. So I think I want it longer. I'm using strokes gained hat that I can see out of distance just to help. Distance me. bias is yeah. huge for scoring. Absolutely. So I start turning my shoulders up near 90. 167. Yep, 100%. And what's really interesting is my driving this week is as good as it always is. So with my driver, I can do that turn and it makes no difference. I can hit time. Yep, makes, that makes sense. But with my iron, pull hooks. Yeah. Ob block, like I've gone from dart throwing, but always landing a bit short to pin eye, to being up with Dan and other people clubbing, but I'm not admitting like no greens. Like I'm losing on a scratch. On my strokes game for this trip, I think I'm losing a shot uh, per round on uh, approach play, where normally on a scratch handicap in yep. my approach play, I'm gaining between two to four. And on a Tour Pro, on Brody's app that I use, Golf Metrics app, I'm around losing 0.5 strokes gain to sometimes gaining 0.5 if I'm having it. But 100%. And you get that because, think about it, from a mechanical advantage, the driver works well. Yeah. Hitting up. Well, everything yeah. you're doing is increasing the angle of attack. Yeah. The ball's on a tee. Yeah. So it's easier for a good player to manage the face. You can handle that. It's not jeopardized the integrity of impact. As soon as you do that with an iron when the ball's on the ground, now you've gone from, sounds like you're a pretty neutral to anything, maybe a down and left guy yeah. for a putt-putt. Yeah. Now you're a shallow right guy and you 
don't manage it. it. You don't hit it like Jason Day. Yeah. So you can't Steady on. You can't manage that. <laughs> So I used to like that hat on him. I think he looks silly on him. It's better on me now. Um, so, but but that's what you you know. That's why that happens. And so certain players like you can try and hit the ball further, and you can hit up on it. Mm. Some people do great with it. Mm. Some people it destroys yeah, them. Absolutely, so, we've so, seen that on yeah, tour hundred percent because they search. Yeah, I've been on many tour ranges. If anything, tour pros are worse searchers oh, than the guys and girls. Hundred percent. If like, you tell a tour player that they're going to get two yards. And they got to go head first off this building with their arms behind the back. <laughs> They'll do it, right? Because they're they're so ambitious and they yeah, their tenacity, works. right? Yeah. So they're always going to try. So you everything that you do as a golfer, we saw this with Dan. Like if you've got good face to path, you've got way more options. Yes. Yeah. So that disclaimer still applies to this video, and I totally <laughs> agree. I try to put it in everyone. If you haven't got control of face to path. Watch any of the ones where I talk about face the path and get some control of it, then these kind of ideas apply. Yeah, 100%. As we were, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, for you, like, I can totally see that working. It's just a question of well, how much, with your irons, how accurate are you? Like, can you have the swing for the driver and then go back to your iron swing yes. for your irons? Well, and I think that's, yeah. that's, from a playing golf, when we sort of get into like player development, yeah. You, you've got to have your tee ball where you've got wide open space, you can smash it, and then you've got your tee ball that when, when the, you know, is a little bit more in place. So it's cool for you if it's just, hey, I go from turning my shoulders a little bit, 70 degrees to, now I feel like I've got this big 90 degree shoulder turn, it's actually probably more than that to be honest, yeah. looking at the video I saw. Chest rotation. Chest rotation, yep, yep. So, it's one of those things where that's going to create more distance because the club's got more linear travel. It's just yeah, simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just talking back to the traces then. So, my first trace, apart from my little quirky little loop that I had, yeah. was relatively linear. Yeah, pretty linear. I'd say it's pretty linear. And it's, you know, that would totally equate to your, as you called it, your pat pat. 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 Yeah, pat pat. Not pat pat, pat pat. Like, as, as in postman like, pat? As in like, pat pat. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm not like hitting you. No, I'm like I'm here, just constantly going like this. You're tickling. That's me. annoying, isn't it? Tickle. <laughs> but playing on putt putt. <laughs> so you're pat to pat. <laughs> and then yeah. I play putt putt. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's very linear. Yeah, and then if it, what, if you go to the next one, which is hilarious, it really shoots out and then goes. It like does a big curve, yeah. doesn't it? Would you? So so that's we, me basically going because I'm thinking all about his shoulders. So this shoulder is obviously going forward, which is pushing me out yeah. that way. Yep. And then it starts to go this way, which is then pushing me back in there. 100%. And so every, everything we do with our feet is reflected in the club, and everything we do with our body is reflected in the ground. Like, it's, like you can work the problem at one way or the other. Yeah. And some people do brilliantly with these cues, and some people don't. Yeah, it's so, a bit, so it's it's where, a bit yes, it's bad, isn't it, for it, some? And as a coach, my job is always to try and figure out what's the best mechanism, the least invasive way for somebody to be able to change something. This is really effective for a lot of people, but for a lot of people, it's really not. Yeah, and yeah. so it's, uh, to your point, the, the, the simpler you can make the cues, the better. And it, but the great thing is you can see change. And yeah. as what's, what we want to do as coaches, we want to be able to see a meaningful change by doing something, and this is, it's super easy to see and adjust. So really for me, what we're thinking then is it's almost two swing stuff, isn't it? 100%. Yeah, you, you got to. It's have an it. iron dart ball, and just accept that I can hit a six iron instead of a seven. Yeah. Because how much am I gaining on strokes from hitting a six or a seven? Well, yes, you could quantify it with numbers, but if I'm gaining enough with a six in what I play in, yeah. Why would I give those gains away to hit the seven and then just literally give my? So my average gains, like I say, on a scratch handicapper from the few rounds I've collected on data, let's say six rounds I've got on my app, um, you know, I'm gaining on a scratch handicap between two and four shots on approach play. Yep. So, like, you know, that's why, and I could see that when I used to play. I'd play in competitions, unless you played in, like, national events where it was much more level when it came down to those smaller nuances. You know, I'm just going to keep it in the green. I know they're going to miss, and I'm going to win. Yeah, you're that. just going to jab away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Where, when I go to this, I see the 167, I like that. Get excited. That's a 7 iron, and it's a true lofted one, everybody. This isn't a yeah, power can I make? Can it's... I make a club suggestion in a minute? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you are, uh, we'll talk about my bag. Like my bag. My bag is hilarious. Um, it's a classic. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, I'm thinking, and it works with a driver. So I need to just continue trying to have yep. that feeling with my driver and get that extra distance. Because we've seen 10 yards pick up in my driver, haven't we? Yes. 
So I'm a yes, 262 definitely. carry with every club I test for all the re reviews I've done over years. I try and change my shoulder turn and I'm literally 272, literally Perfect. overnight. Like you should do, and, you, and again, you're, with a driver, the goal is to send it. I mean, strokes gain driving is such a distance bias, it's not even yeah, funny. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to send it. So smash the driver, it's on a tee, but just with the irons, you've got two options. Either stick with the ones you got and try and know that you're going to hit it 10 yards short with your 70 yeah, 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 turn, yeah. degree turn, or Titleist makes some really cool AP2s, yeah, but then, AP3s. But now we're talking, yeah, but let's not get confused with D plane. So basically, all that happens when I've measured. Because at the end of the day, the delivered loft is all that's going to influence my hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you might get. So I go and take loft off this. Yeah. I'm not actually hitting a seven iron into that green. It's a six iron. So just well, just stay there, Dan. So is this why you got all these long ones with head covers in your bag? I have a lot of head covers because so my hybrids are my best clubs normally. So I would rather often I would rather have a twenty three degree hybrid into a club into a hole than a nine iron. And the reason I mean that is if I'm playing strokes gained against someone like Dan, the 23 hybrid from 200, I'm going to win that game because it's one of my better clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I'm not going to hit it as close as my nine, I understand that, but I'm going to hit it closer than most people I play from that distance yeah, yeah. of that club. Where a nine iron, he's as good as me with that, if not better. So even though we both hit it closer, I'd rather us both have... So when you talk about Ross Bridge being close, well, I hit hybrid into every hole. Yeah, you're going to have a big Let's advantage. go and have a game over there, like, because I feel like, if, well, not mix, I'm playing rubbish, but I can play that game. Yeah. Because we went and played there, I shot like four over and then we were jet lagged and everything. But like, you know, it's a par 74, it wasn't that bad. I was hitting hybrids for fun. Yeah. So look, there's my bag. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, I, so I, my five iron was just boring me because I keep hitting my 23 degree hybrid. So I've just got two six irons. I've got an AP1, which is basically a five iron. Yep. But when I stand hitting this one, it pops up in the air easy. Well, that's the other, the other part. But I'm not fooled. I'm not tricked. I know that isn't a six iron. You know, 100%. So my only last question then quickly. So I like that. Two swings I like. I've often talked with my students. I've, I've talked for years and still do teach a bit. But they would come to me and they're cutting every driver, right? And you get them, you know, you've got your launch monitors, and their dispersion is like tight, but it's all 40 yards left. And they've driven down like four hours of seaming, right? And I say to them, Have you ever tried aiming 40 yards left? I can't do that, that's not right. You've just dispersed every driver, yep. it's tight, like what? I want it to draw. Oh. Yeah, no, well, I well, let's get you in that fade on target, aim 40 yards left. That's boring, isn't it? Yeah, that works every time. Now we can play in a draw. Yeah. And then you can choose which one. You've got to build tools. around your strengths. Yeah, absolutely. So, so again, it's like figure out what your dispersion of shots are. And then once you've got that, then you want to try and basically learn how to adjust your alignment and your aim to capitalize on that dispersion my, of shots. My big question to me then in my head, which we'll do another video on, can I put that shoulder turn in, so that amount, chest rotation, and still hit the functional cut? Because I know I can, it just feels really... So I, to me, to do that, I feel like I have to turn almost like this, opposed to going... Well, yeah, I mean... As, a, as an exaggeration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you could, I mean, for sure. The other thing is to, like, how well are you managing your ball position? So the first thing is, if you're going to pivot like that, then you probably... There's a couple of things you need to address. Like, at address, you may be way better off with a real level shoulder turn, shoulder plane at address. You don't want any tilt. Yeah. You want to take in the biases that are going to give you more cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that they match the dynamics of the pivot. And yeah. so it's always like, okay, I need a ball position that's way up. Ooh, that doesn't feel very good. Okay, well, you've got to pivot like this. You need to catch the ball on the back of the arc. You want to be more level. So now you're in... And you want all these, if you like, chicks that are going to shift the path to the left mm -mm. to match with a pivot that's the engine which is wanting to shift it more to the right because you've you've got like this and then you can always manipulate the club club in terms of where it is whether it's laid off and where the club center of mass is yeah. you've got some but you still have the engine that creates the speed you just need to make sure the alignments are pretty good for your cut so i think you could still do it yeah but you again you might not like the fact that it's convoluted and now you've got conflicting pieces yeah. and in your mind as a player, it's like we know as coaches you can make these changes, but it doesn't mean that you can actually do it when it comes to application. 100%. And that's the hardest part about golf. It's that, always, yeah, how do you get, you, here's the issue. Functional, it's got to function. It has to function, it has to work. So, and that's why I'm making this video right now because I think it's such a good teaching message. I come to this tour, so come to the States, play these courses with this new idea of turn. 
and absolutely on my launch monitors, my distance numbers better. Than it. But I cannot play. Like I'm hitting five greens in regulation, yeah. but I'm normally 12 to 16 greens in regulation. 100%. Can't come. Can't so play. what's happened mid tour is we play Pebble Beach and it was fun because it's pretty, and I'm just playing like an idiot. We get to the next course and I'm having two swings. So I'm trying to make it functional. And if you think about the average girl for watching this video, I work all week, yep. watch every video, can hmm. try this, go and play, goes to crap, four rolls in, oh, I'm just gonna go back to work. So it's such an interesting teaching message, I think, for me. Having two swings, which is something lots of students have said to me, oh, you should never have two swings, actually is a functional thing that can work. Yeah, well, I tell everybody, when you play golf, mm. the best players, like the, the players I coach on the tour, my job is out of the 14 clubs in their bag, the person that has the ability to hit the most shots on call and execute is the best player. And so I like to think of shots versus swings. So what are you going to do to make the ball draw, the ball fade, to go low, to go high? And I think people need to embrace more of different techniques for different shots. And if they can do it on call, it works, as opposed to they have to stand there and do the same thing every single time. Because golf, as we talked earlier when it's you guys dynamic, got here, it? is so dynamic and it's such a changing environment that you need to be adaptable to anything and I think shot making is a lost art and totally you know you, you've got to be able to do it and, uh, and embrace the fact that hey it's not going to feel the same we're very we much we kind of grew up in the same era we stood behind a video camera and we thought everything had to be one way and perfect yeah, and, and when you these great diagnostic tools now the best thing about them is they show us that we got there's it wrong. lots <laughs> yeah we got it wrong and there's lots of different nuances so I encourage people you know, and you don't know. The human brain's super powerful, and we're yeah. only just learning about it. You can have that versatility, but you've just got to see yourself doing it. And I, most of the time, most people are reluctant and scared to change something because they don't want to get worse. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, good stuff. There you go. Two swings, Dan. I might compete with you over eighteen if I do that. It's my only hope. A little mid-tour lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Turn that off. That didn't happen. That, that's going to be deleted. That one. <laughs>